in the book of Genesis. Chapter 3. The Lord says to the serpent in verse 14, the Lord God says to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all of the days of your life. So we know through out scripture you find out who this serpent actually is it's the one called satan which is opposer opponent adversary we know him as the accuser it's called serpent dragon and other things as well god says he's cursed which is arar in hebrew which means bitterly curse or great loathing So he's greatly loathed and bitterly cursed. And he says, you will not only crawl on your belly, but you will eat dust all the days of your life. Dust is afar. Afar. We find the word dust in chapter 2 of Genesis. This is chapter 3. I was reading. Chapter 2, verse 7 says, Then the Lord God, Yahweh, God. And then right after God, you have something that goes untranslated. It's two Hebrew letters, Alev Tav. This is the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Alev is the first, Tav is the last. Jesus says, I am the first, I am the last. I am, in Greek, he said Alpha and Omega. In Hebrew, it would be, I am the Alev Tav. So, Alev Tav formed the man. Jesus Before he came to earth, he's the one that formed the man from what? The dust from the ground. He formed him out of the dust, afar, afar, which is dust. So, man was formed out of dust. The serpent's told you will eat the dust the rest of your days of your life. The very thing that man is made out of. Then we have demons that are destined to live on the earth. These are the spirits, spirits of the children of fallen angels. When the children die, I mean children meaning their offspring, when these offspring die, Their spirit comes out of them. And it says, since they were born upon the earth, this is Enoch chapter 15, verse 11 says, since they were born on the earth, then the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants, what do they do? These are the spirits, which are also called demons, which are also called evil spirits. The spirits of the giants, they afflict, they oppress, they destroy They attack, they do battle, and they work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. These spirits have proceeded from women but also from men, because women are born from the seed of man. Women come out, they're born, they grow to an age where they can give birth. They gave themselves to these fallen angels because the angels offered these women presents, gifts, all sorts of things. And so, they traded things to these women in exchange to let these women hold their babies in them, be the carriers of the children of the fallen ones. Now, if you read through Enoch, which is very fascinating, these angels that had fallen 
and did this thing. They they weren't crushed at the heart for what they did. They were just um, they regretted. They were ashamed. They had shame for what they did because uh, because they got caught, right? There's a lot of people that are sorry for things, and they're only sorry because they got caught. They're not sorry because it breaks their heart for what they did. They just got caught. And that's what happened with these angels, and they asked Enoch to pl- plead a God for them on their behalf because Enoch is a man, right? And God gave to man this earth, and these angels wanted to take over, and they wanted to spread their seed upon the earth because in that garden... What happened between the serpent and Adam and Eve is the serpent, Eve says, he deceived me. So God's like, okay, so since you did this thing, and it says that he's the most cunning of all of them. And that word cunning in Hebrew means you're the one that you think ahead. You plan out future things. You think ahead more wisely than anyone else. Right? Always thinking, always planning ahead to have things work in effect for him. See, the serpent was told that the seed of the woman was going to crush the seed of the serpent. So what would happen is the serpent starts doing crafty, cunning things like, like he does. Planning ahead stirs up some things tells his buddies hey listen the guys that followed his voice followed him this is what we got to do we got to get our seed on the earth because if we spread our seed on the earth our offspring what will happen is there won't be any offspring of the woman that will crush us if we take over The one that's supposed to crush our head, if we fill our seed throughout the earth, there won't be that one to crush us in the head. You understand? Now, things don't work out as planned for the enemy. When I say enemy, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the spiritual wicked forces of darkness. Because that's that's the real fight that we're in. That's the real enemy. You might think it's people. But there, there's people that act in accord with the enemy, right? They act in accord with the enemy. Bible says they will lick the dust as the serpent does. They'll lick the dust as the serpent eats the dust. The serpent's food is dust. Well, they'll lick it too. Meaning they're going to do destructive things to people because the dust of the earth is what man was made of. That's what man was formed out of. We're not talking about the spirit of man which God breathed through into the man's nostrils so that the man became a living soul. God spirited the man so when his spirit entered in, he became a living soul. That soul that desires connection with God. But through the knowledge of good and evil, there was a disconnect. There was a disconnect. Man sensed disconnection, distance from God. And realized how naked he was now. So what did man do? Hid himself from God. Instead of being open and exposed with God because there's a closeness, a connection. No, Now there's a distance and a disconnection. Why? Because man suddenly had carnal thinking. Through the knowledge of good and evil, he started thinking carnally. And that carnal mind said, you're distant from God. And by the way, you're naked, you're exposed. And God curses the serpent for what he did. But he says, you will eat the dust of the earth all the days of your life. And Adam, man, was made from the dust of the earth. 
why I'm sharing these things with you. It because it's because we're we're in a serious serious battle, you guys, and we gotta wake up. We gotta wake up because now we are allowed to partake of the tree of life. When you partake of the tree of life instead of the knowledge of good and evil, which was already done, it was already done. You already have the knowledge of good and evil. But man was forbidden to eat from the tree of life. They were driven out of the garden so that they couldn't partake of it again. But Jesus, he is our tree of life. We partook of him. So now you don't have to feel or sense with the carnal thinking distance from God. Although when you go into carnal thinking, you will. You'll feel naked, ashamed, afraid. You'll want to hide yourself from God, living in guilt and shame and condemnation. Although it's not God condemning you. It's your carnal mind condemning you. Because that carnal mind is in alignment with the enemy. The enemy can't affect the mind of Christ which is in you, but he can get you in your carnal thinking. That's why he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal who you believe you are from you. He wants your identity. He cannot take your identity, but he wants to steal from you who you believe you are and who you believe God says you are. So that you'll be naked, afraid, and ashamed. And and condemned. Because of all the guilt. That's why trusting in what Jesus did for us is so important. That's entering into his rest when you trust what he's done for you. And when you enter into his rest, it takes a labor. The book of Hebrews says that. It's difficult. It's a struggle. Right? It's a struggle. You're laboring to rest. What an oxymoron that is. But it's true. You're you're giving it everything you got to enter into his rest, which means trusting in the finished work of Christ for you. See, when you do that, then you can know your identity. You know who you are. You know who Christ is in you. You know and discover what you've been given, and then you learn how to use it and use it well. Jesus takes back the authority that Adam gave to the enemy. Adam says, okay, earth belongs to me. Well, now I give it to you. And the enemy is called now God, small g, of the earth. But through the victory of Christ, he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And guess what? I give you all authority and a power. All authority and power. So now you can come and destroy all the works of the devil just as Jesus was doing when he was on earth. Destroying the works of the devil. Healing those that were oppressed by the devil. Do you know how many people ask the the, the same question today over and over and over again? I've heard it so many times. If there was a God, why does he allow so much evil on this earth? Why does he allow so much wickedness? Why does he allow so much suffering and pain? What I never hear from people is, since there is so much evil, wickedness, suffering, and pain, there must be a devil. And if there's a devil, what can we do to stop what he's doing? See, when you're trusting in the finished work of Christ, you're trusting that he has provided everything you need in this world. And not only do you have enough for yourself, you have enough for others as well because you're a river. Rivers flow. They're not pools of water that just sit stagnant. Rivers flow and keep on flowing. They don't run dry, right? Not the rivers of God. Not the spirit of life that's in you. And that spirit of life forces out death. But so many of us have been robbed by the enemy some of us were born into religious thinking that you'll never it never teaches who you are in Christ or who Christ is in you you're just a slave of God trying to get something that he's already given trying to earn and work for something that he gives for free come take life's water free Some of us were born with, with families that teach us good principles and all that and the truth. But what happens is 
the devil comes along. He offers you things of the kingdom of his world. A lot of people love that. They take the, he, 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 give, he offers too much. They take the bait. And then they what? They forget about who they are. See, he came as a thief so that they'll forget about who they are. Some of us, we never knew it. Some of us forget it. Some of us do both. That's why laboring to enter into his rest these days is so important so that you can know who you are because there's an enemy out there and he's on the attack. He knows he has a short time and he has a whole bunch of his minions working for him. And they don't partake of of the food from the earth, right? But they're always hungry. They're always hungry. What are they hungry for? Oh, the dust of the earth because that's their food, the dust And since man was made of the dust of the earth, they want to do what? They want to eat you up with cancer, with viruses, with sicknesses, diseases and such. They want to eat at your mind. They want to eat at your body. They can't eat at your spirit. Your spirit is the spirit of God. They can't touch it. But if they can eat at your mind, if they can eat away at your soul... by affecting your body, your health, even your finances, relationships and such, well then you start deteriorating in your soul. In the book of John, 1 John chapter, what was it, 3 John? I think it's 3 John, sorry, 3 John verse 2. God wants you to prosper and be in health, it says. But the way to to do that is to get your soul to prosper. It doesn't say get your spirit to prosper because your spirit's already one with the Lord. One with Christ. You have all the prosperity you need contained in your spirit. But it's getting your soul to open up. Grab hold of what's contained in your spirit and let it flow like a river through your body. Through your mind. But the enemy, he comes to steal. He wants to put, he wants to put like a, 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 like a beaver when a beaver builds a dam. He wants to put blockades in you, so that those rivers won't flow. And by buying into his belief system and getting his stuff from him, his stuff, all it does is it blocks those rivers of life that are in you from flowing. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, they'd always say, you know the. If you uh, leave Jehovah God's organization, which they believe to be the Jehovah's Witnesses religion, well, the devil will bless your efforts. What they're not realizing is the devil is incapable of doing any sort of blessing because all he is is cursed. One that is cursed cannot bless. You cannot bless if you're cursed. You can't give what you don't have. He cannot give the blessing because he doesn't have it. Just like he cannot give anybody peace. He can't bring peace. The only way you might think he's bringing you peace is if he lays off of you for a while. It's not him imparting peace. He's just letting you believe that you have peace. But it's a false sense of peace. No, you can have peace right in the middle of the storm when you are trusting in Christ trusting in who he is in you and who you are in him there's a friend of mine let me press pause all right just ran into a friend from the gym saying hi so anyway um so what the dust of the earth it's food for the devil do you understand food the devil's food So he attacks people still because it says all the days of his life. Now there is going to be a time where he doesn't exist anymore. Thrown into a lake of fire. Consumed. He's going to disappear for a while. Live in a prison, but then he'll be released again. Once again to attack on people. Right? He sees us as his food. But he can't do any blessings 
all he can do is curse and all he can do is steal, kill, destroy. No matter what he offers people, people take the bait all the time, all the time. Music industry, Hollywood, hey, even, even, even in the churches, politics for sure, media, absolutely. He's very subtle, very crafty. Let me read this word to you real quick. Back to Genesis. I'm going to go get my workout in. Chapter 3. It says in verse 1, Now the serpent, the Nakash, Nakash is serpent or snake, he was more crafty than any other beast of the field. Beast is Kai, C-H-A-Y in Hebrew. It means alive, living, or even wild beast. So out of all the things in the field on this earth, he's the most crafty, right? The most crafty. So crafty is arum in Hebrew. Arum. It means acting with or showing care and thought for the future. Clever at achieving one's aims by indirect or deceitful methods. So there are people, plenty of people, including myself, that have been deceived by this crafty one and the minions that follow after him, right? These, these spiritual wicked forces of darkness. He deceived me by religion so that I would never have identity. But then even though at 30 years old, I get Christ into my life, um, get out of religion, get Christ in my life, what's the first thing this thief wants to do? He wants to steal. So immediately he came after my identity again. So I would never figure out who I was. And he used people to do this. Hey, you might not be saved. Let me do the prayer with you. Follow the prayer. Follow it and mean it from your heart. So I'm like, you know, I might not be saved. When I called on Christ personally and did it alone, I might not be saved. I need to be in front of everybody and and, and let them see my salvation, right? Oh, I got to do this in front of a crowd. So then I would do it. And then I would walk away unsure of my salvation and go to all these different churches week after week after week, church to church to church every Sunday. I'm just going to go to a few different churches. And I became obsessed with, with trying to get saved, trying to get saved, trying to get saved. After leaving this condemning religion of Jehovah's Witnesses and then going to all these different Christian churches and having people, I, I, I'm not kidding you. So many people, hey, you might not be saved. It's almost like they wanted to be the ones to be able to say, I led a Jehovah's Witness to Christ. It was me. I, I led him in prayer. So they could take credit. They could take credit and tell their friends, I, I led this Jehovah's Witness to Christ. Yay, look it. Like they have some kind of badge or token from it. I was everybody's badge and token. Before you know it, I was so confused again. Confusion is Babylon. That's what it means. Babylon is confusion. So what did I do? In my mind, I entered right into Babylon. And then I entered into Babylon the Great, a place of great confusion. I, I, till I was so lost, I had no clue what my identity in Christ is or who he was in me because I, I, I was so sure I never had him in the first place. I was too wicked and evil and I didn't believe in my heart when I said the prayer that was supposed to save me. I, didn't, I must not have meant it from all of my heart. And see, that's exactly where the enemy wants you. And once you get confident in your salvation, he doesn't want you to rest in that confidence. He wants to rob it from you. Confidence is faith, trust, and belief all wrapped in one word. Confident. You're not confident in your works. You're confident in what Christ has done for you and you are resting in that. See, the the earth belongs to us. God gave us the earth. He didn't give it to the enemy. The enemy wanted the rule. He wants it. There's something very valuable to him about this place, right? And he wants kingship over it. He wants to be the God of the earth. He wants to be the God of everything and everyone. He wanted Jesus to bow to him and serve him. He even promised Jesus the whole, all the kingdoms. These are mine. I'll give them to you right here, right now. You can set up your kingdom now if you want. Jesus didn't take the bait. Unfortunately, a lot of people do take the bait because what the devil offers them, they think is a blessing. 
and it's not a blessing. It's a curse, and it's not peace. Oh yeah, if he lays off of people for a while, they might start sensing peace, and hey, wow, oh no, he'll come and he'll viciously attack. He will, because his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. So we've been given something from Christ, something that Christ brought when he was on earth, and he gives it to those that believe, Mark chapter 16. And if you only go into Mark chapter 16 and see what types of things will follow those that believe, instead of the believers chasing after these things, no, these things will follow those that believe. There's power that comes with Christ in you. There's authority. And we have the ability to destroy the works of the devil. What we have in us is much more powerful than what the devil's got in him and what those demons have in them. We have something much more powerful. It's called the Spirit of Christ in us. And that Spirit, when you lay hands on the sick, when you believe, that Spirit is what flows and pushes sickness out of them. Right? When you command in the authority of the name of Christ in you, when you know who you are, You know what you've been given. You learn how to use it. When you speak it out, those demons, those evil spirits, they have to flee. They have to leave. Right? And all the stuff that they're eating people's bodies with, eating people's minds with, right? That has to flee as well. That's why we got to wake up to who we are, you guys. That's why I keep on saying it and saying it and saying it. I'm saying it so that I will hear it. You know, faith comes by hearing. We need to hear these things over and over again and get into God's Word and quit seeing God's Word and dividing it incorrectly because sometimes when you read God's Word, you sense distance from God because you start getting ashamed of yourself. That's why you have to labor to enter into His rest. And you have to hear the Word correctly, divided correctly, so you can understand how it applies to you today as a believer, as a son of the living God. So, what we want to do is starve that devil, right? Starve that devil out because he's got food and he still exists and he's still eating away at mankind. He's still eating away at all things that are flesh, animals, all sorts of things. He wants to destroy everything that God had made and said was good because the devil wants to make everything into his image. And his image is cursed. And we got to see it as that. And start pushing out the blessing everywhere. Push that curse. Drive that curse out. And spread the blessing. Alright you guys. I hope this message has blessed you. I love you all. Hope you have a great day. And I'll see you all next time.